Hi everyone, I thought I'd do a quick video. So we've been doing this uh, fabrication series. Talked about welding, welding tube, square and round. Some T and some lap joints, that kind of thing. So we never really covered if you have a MIG welder to take C25 gas or really any kind of gas that you need if you're wanting to do TIG welding or MIG welding, where do you get these from? Right? So we just made a run to CK Supply where we re-upped our gas bottles. So typically you'll go into some kind of welder supply, whether it be air gas, CK, Prax Air, there's a bunch of them. Depends on your area, look up welding supply. If you need gas, you can either buy like this uh, 100 cubic foot bottle, you can buy the smaller bottles. It really depends on what you want to do. Almost none of them will take someone else's bottle and fill it. Every now and then you'll find one who'll take it for a fee and exchange it. They like to have their bottles so they can inspect them and they can be ensured that you're getting a good product. So when you get your bottle, typically you're going to sign up for a one-year lease. You don't have to. You can buy your bottles outright. In the case like CK, it's a one-time fee over the five-year term. It's like 200 bucks, And they give you half off your first rental. And a bottle rental is about $50 to $65 depending on what time and you know what gas you're renting. So you'll take in your old bottle once it's empty and you'll get a refill bottle just like this. So first thing you'll put it in your cart or your table or whatever you're gonna put it on. Don't just leave this sitting out somewhere so it falls over. All right, so the table we built has this little cutout section. It's got a chain on it so it so it holds it upright so it doesn't fall out. And if you're gonna be doing this at work, well that's an OSHA requirement also. So when you get it, they'll all have the tops on them. Whether they're the large bottles like this, whether they're the smaller bottles like this, they all have that same top on them. Now CK does something a little different. They wrap these up, and I guess that's so they can tell that, that they're filled. So your welder will have some kind of gauges on it. Now for the MIG welder, I, I kind of like these style gauges. But for the TIG welder, I like the one with a little ball float. So your gauges have a little fitting on it. You always want to make sure this is clean. Don't put any kind of tape or goop on this at all. The seal is right here on this surface. So you'll want to make sure this is nice and clean. When you get your tank, you'll want to just inspect. And you'll always want to crack this a little bit to blow out any debris. It's going to be a little bit loud. And that blows out any kind of debris that's in there for the seal. Now you'll just thread this in there. Remember, don't put tape on this. It's not a pipe fitting. It's just a straight fitting. And it is to be loose, and you'll be able to tell when it's tight because, it, well, it's not sloppy here, right? So you'll put it on there. Now most of these are going to be inch and an eighth. So we keep an inch and an eighth wrench here on the table. So you'll just snug it up. It doesn't have to be, you know, stupid tight. And I would suggest making a mounting location if you got a cart or something. So that wrench is always around. Now we talked about setting the how much C of H of gas. And you always check when you turn it on. You see you have here depending on if you're reading in bar or PSI, a lot of that depends on whether or not you're in the States or somewhere else. And it'll tell you, you know, you're sitting at almost 2,000 PSI in the bottle, which is another reason why you want the bottle secure. Now these gases, they're inert gases, they're made for shielding. These are shielding gases, they're not flammable. And we covered in one of our other videos setting up the how many CFH. Typically I'll MIG weld with 30 CFH of gas, but you'll want to reset your CFH after you put the new tank on, right? So you got your, your bottle. So don't ground out so you're, pull the trigger and I'll just dial it up. 
30 CFH. Now you can periodically get a bad tank of gas, so if you change bottles and all of a sudden your welds have just gone to hell, go through all the rest of your checks. Every now and then you can get a bad bottle of gas. So this is a traditional dial style. Now the other style gauges where the ball actually floats. So the other style gauges, you'll float a ball. Now that's why I like these for more TIG welding. You set your gas by how much gas is flowing over the ball. TIG welding is a little bit different. We'll cover that more on the channel as we go. But depending on what you're doing, if you buy like this Miller 220, you'll get two sets of these gauges, one for the MIG and one for the TIG. I changed this out because I like that floating ball and I can actually add a purge line to this if I want to. And when you're done, always turn them off. Because if you have loose fitting, you're gonna be exchanging out the gas tank. All right, so if you do some kind of MIG or TIG welding, once again, you're gonna need gas, Go down to your local welding supply, look it up online, it all comes across. There's always your big ones like we listed, and there's going to be some smaller ones as well. Whatever works best for you. You're going to go through a lot more gas than you think you are. Especially if you're TIG welding, you're going to go through a lot more gas. The MIG, you're not going to go through as much, but if you really get into the fabrication work, so it's kind of like building your garage. You think you need one size garage, you need one about two or three times its size. So kind of plan for the future, especially if you're having to buy the bottle. You don't want to buy it twice because there's not a trade-in. Go down to your local supply, talk to them. They're usually very helpful. And then follow along some of the fab stuff we're doing here. If you have any questions about what we've done here, go back to look at some of the other fabrication things we've done on the channel. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear some feedback from you. So this is Larry. I'll see you in the next video that pops up here.